Lilu, is this movie three hours and ten minutes? How are we going to make it without using the restroom? <coughs> what? What do you mean it's mostly set in beautiful flowing water sequences? <coughs> really? Is James Cameron on a mission to make us wet ourselves? Ah, uh, the future of filmmaking. A true visionary. <coughs> Buckle up, let's talk Avatar Way of Water. Basically Avatar 2. When I saw the first Avatar movie more than a decade ago, I walked out entertained and stunned with the technological advances James Cameron had been pushing for years. I didn't walk out thinking, hmm, I can't wait to see if he's going to do a sequel to Avatar. No less the thought that Cameron was planning a minimum of five movies. Five! I mean, I liked Avatar, but do I want a whole Avatar cinematic universe? Eh, I'm not sure about that one. How in the world was he going to take this basic Dances with Wolves premise, you know, with a little bit of a you know special effects laid in shell, yeah, sugar coat, if you will, and squeeze it for five movies? Tell me how! Why was one of cinema's greatest, most amazing directors uh, you know, obsessed with this world. And would we lose him to this world for too many years? One thing everyone should know by now, don't doubt James Cameron. This is a man who was hated on for years by all the press. You know, uh, when he was doing Titanic, everyone said that it was going to be an epic Titanic box office failure. And what did he do? He destroyed the box office. He, like, you know, he was nominated for Academy Awards. I, I don't have to, you know, bump up and tell you how much of an impact Titanic made. But let's just say, well, how do you follow that up? How do you follow up the number one movie of all time? Eh, I don't know. Maybe follow it up with the number one movie of all time, and that was Avatar. And like Kate Winslet in Titanic, when she holds out her hand to Leonardo DiCaprio, James Cameron or, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio will go, do you trust me? And you take that hand. You take James Cameron's hand and you go along with that journey. I mean, this guy has also had quite a success rate with his sequels. I mean, Aliens and Terminator 2, two of my favorite movies of all time. So this guy has a track record. Avatar The Way of the Water drops us right back into the world of Pandora and the Navi people. Technology has certainly improved and once again I could just sit there in absolute wonder. I mean every little detail, the skin on the Navi's faces, the amazing creatures, the water textures, it's incredible that pretty much everything that I'm looking at isn't actually there. Seriously, it's hard to distinguish where the physical reality stops and the visual effects begin. Which is why I suggest seeing this on the biggest screen you can find and in 3D. I mean, 3D had quite a downfall since the first time Avatar was released. I mean, Avatar is the thing that actually brought 3D like, you know, into the mainstream again. Um, and I think this Avatar, once again, it will take an Avatar to bring 3D back. Uh, because, you know, the immersiveness and, you know, the James Cameron's use of the 3D technology is, is incredible. And it really brings you into this beautiful world that he has created and really enriches your experience. Imagine how immersive this review would be in 3D. I mean, Lilu could be just popping out at you. Just popping out. You'd be just going, woo, Lilu. Lilu, I want a better. I want a better. You would like no pets from virtual people, huh? You want to get virtual pets? Little virtual pet, Lilu? No? Okay. Many years have gone by in the story, and we find our heroes, played by Sam Worthington and Zoe Saldana, still in the forest of Pandora. But now they have four children, one of which is adopted, and the child of a killed character from the first movie, played by Sigourney Weaver. I'll leave that one to the movie for you to work that one out. Once again, Stephen Lang is the relentless villain here. Wait, what's that, Lulu? He died in the first movie? Oh, oh yeah, he died. Just watch the movie. It, it'll all make sense there. Essentially, the family is on the run. They seek shelter and are introduced to a brand new water culture of Pandora. I mean, it really seems James Cameron really has a thing for water. I mean, really a thing for water. 
They are very similar to the Navi, minus, you know, more webbed hands and a tail more fit for the ocean. The ocean version of Pandora definitely helps distinguish itself from the forest of the first film, but also, you know, has the same kind of mission for love and respect of nature. It seems James Cameron truly hopes that these films will teach the younger generation, and hopefully ourselves, a newfound respect for Earth's beautiful creatures. Oh, there's a... Uh, you see them? Look, Lilu, Appreciating nature. Lilu, hasn't James Cameron taught you anything about getting along with nature? Lilu, oh my goodness. Lilu, look at the deer. Look at him go. You're still angry. This time around, the film is a little less dancing with wolves and merely a simple story of a family in danger instead of the white colonizer learning the ways of the native people and doing it better. The second film is the result of two indigenous tribes encountering one another and learning the new ways from each other. And the white colonizer family still does it better. Wait, wait, what? That's right. I'd say the indigenous criticism of the first film is still very much a part of this film as well, as the forest people become the leaders of the water revolt and essentially better water people than the water people. Not to mention Sam Worthington's character, even though he is now mind and body of a Navi, is still a white colonizer. For all of James Cameron's villain buildup in the movie, it is obvious that he is against colonization. But some of these themes get in the way of that pure vision and messaging that I think James Cameron is trying to get across. He just can't escape the fact that our hero's perspective muddles things a little bit. One of the reasons Cameron's films are so accessible are the heroes and the villains, which are classic archetypes, and all viewers can easily get on board. Ooh, little bumpy roads, Lilu. Bumpy roads. In this film, he really explores what it means to be a family and a father, which is the real thematic differentiator from the first film. Again, the love of a family, a theme that is universal. With three hours of runtime, we get much more character development than we are used to for films like this. He also uses the runtime for world building and the beautiful scenery, but if you have a world as beautiful as this one, it's not a bad place to spend some time. All of this character time is important in helping us care about this family because everything comes hurtling together for the film's final action-packed last hour. The stakes have been building up to this climactic moment and James Cameron proves again how talented he is when it comes to setting up exciting action sequences. The third act is amazing. Ultimately, if you love the first Avatar film, then you are going to absolutely love this second outing. I don't think this movie offers a different enough experience to win over anyone who, you know, who wasn't satisfied with the first trip to Pandora, as I feel the successes and even the faults of the first film still find themselves very much a part of the DNA of Avatar 2. True to any good Cameron action sequel, there is just more of everything. More characters, more animals, dangers, action. It is all there, and it's just more of it. It's a testament to the filmmaking capabilities of James Cameron that while some of it may be familiar, you know, to the first film, Avatar, Way of the Water, doesn't feel like an empty franchise cash grab. It truly has a lot of heart. But ultimately, Avatar is a visual spectacle above all else. This is what the big screen was made for, and an easy green light, easy green light. James Cameron is the king of blockbusters and is on the mission to get you back in those theater seats. He has returned to give you a spectacle you don't see very often. James Cameron is so ambitious with pushing film technology forward and uses it to meet maximum cinematic impact. I can actually say this time, I'm looking forward to seeing Avatar 3. You win, James Cameron. You win. I must say, a lot of this would be so much easier with a CGI dog. That's right. You better watch yourself, Lilu. 
The CGI is coming along, and you might be easily replaced. It's not so hard to just lay in the back seat doing nothing. This CGI dog would be a visual spectacle, not just a lazy poodle. Pretty impressed that he was able to bring back some of the characters from the dead on this one. I mean, I hope if we died, we'd be brought back to holy sh- Lilo, I'm pink. It, it, I couldn't wait any longer. This review just went too long. I warned you, Lilo. I warned you. <laughs>